today on Zach and Ju, we are making guacamole and plantain chips. This is what a plantain looks like. It's like a green banana with a deceptively thick skin. So you can't peel it like a normal banana. Like, the little, Dakota, Dakota's really strong, but, yeah. really. So, thank you. So what we do is you take a paring knife and just slice through the skin along the ridges. And then, it's still hard. Like, I'm not gonna pretend this is easy. <laughs> We decided that we wanted to make this and we were like, are we gonna be able to find plantains easily? And I swear it was an act of fate. I walked into the grocery store a couple days ago and there was this center display, like in the middle of the grocery store near the checkout, a pile of plantains. I was like, <sighs> it was the universe telling us that we were on the right track. And the reason that you don't wanna cut too far in is because we wanna make chips. And so if you are slicing the plantain itself, then you're not going to get nice rounds. Nice rounds. Nice rounds. Although we didn't make plantain chips when we were in college, but Dakota and I ate a lot of chips and salsa and guacamole. Like a lot. The summer that we turned 21, my birthday's in June and hers is in July. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> it was incredible. It was the best summer. Those were the days, those were the days. And then Julie realized she has a corn allergy, which is why we're making plantain chips and not eating corn chips. Obviously we want these to be as thin as possible. You could probably do it with a knife, but the easiest way to achieve it is with a mandolin. So being very careful of your fingers, anyone who's ever owned one of these has a horror story of losing the top of their finger. But we're just gonna slice on an angle so that the chips are as big and nice as possible. Once we have these all sliced and nice, uh, you just drizzle it with a little bit of oil. You could use avocado oil or I'm using coconut oil right now. So now that we've oiled up our little chips, we're gonna lay them down onto our baking sheet in a single layer. Now, what's important is that you need to either use parchment paper or one of these like silpat mats um, so that they don't stick to the tray. Well, can you tell who's type A and who's not? <laughs> All right, last step before these babies go into the oven, we're going to sprinkle with salt and a little bit of paprika. And you wanna make sure to use a bunch of salt. They're really starchy, like potatoes, so you need more than you think you would. You can also use chili powder. You can make them spicy with like a little cayenne. Great. And these are gonna go in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes on 375. All right, now for the guacamole portion. We're gonna do all of our chopping first before adding our avocados in so they don't get all brown and oxidized. Mm -hmm. So we have some cilantro that we've already prepped. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can include the leaves only. You can do a mixture of leaves and stems, which we have here, or you can do stems only. It just kind of depends on what you prefer in terms of flavor and texture. I like to have some stems in there to add a little extra crunch. It's kind of a nice surprise. We're also going to mince a small shallot. You can really do any kind of onion. So you could do green onion, you could do white onion, you could do minced red onion, but we're gonna do a little shallot. Okay, so we are also going to add in a green chili. This is a serrano, which is three times spicier than a jalapeno, but if you have or like jalapenos, of course use those. I'm just going to slice it lengthwise. And I am going to remove most of the seeds. We're also going to mince two cloves of garlic. If you have one big clove, that's probably fine. These are a little bit smaller. Yum. We're also going to zest a lime right in here. Just adds more bright lime flavor. The thing about guacamole is that you can make it any way you want and ultimately it can be any combination of these ingredients in the proportions that you prefer. Yeah. So we're also going to add the juice of half a lime. So I'm just rolling it around to get the, the juices ready. 
Time was about to go off, so I'm going to check on them and see if they're golden brown yet. You can even take one out and see, like, is this crispy? Definitely not. Ew. No, not crispy. Okay, so the final step for our guacamole is to add the avocados in and then taste for salt and lime. Mm. We're using three avocados. I feel like it's at least a half an avocado per person. This is enough guacamole for me. <laughs> mashing, just mashing. Mash. Mm. All right, lots of salt, so we'll just taste as we go. A few minutes ago, we took the plantain chips out of the oven and put them in a bowl. Oh yeah. It has such a complexity of flavor. Mm -hmm. There's a cilantro, there's a citrus, there's a saltiness. There are layers of shallot and garlic, but the garlic almost makes it a little bit spicy too. And then of course, the help of Serrano has a little kick to it.